Let's get into it. There were four games between top 10 teams this weekend. And that was the first time we've ever had a weekend like this in the regular season. We're going to touch on all of them, obviously. But let's start with the one that just concluded inside the Cole Center. Final score, Purdue 75. Wisconsin 69. Zach Eady finished with 18 points, 13 rebounds, three blocks. Purdue now 21-2 and two overall, 10-2 and two in the Big Ten, alone atop the Big Ten standings. They now have eight quadrant one wins. Nobody has more. They now have a national best 15 wins inside the first two quadrants. Nobody else, including top-ranked UConn, has more than 11. Dead leg, what'd you make of Purdue's latest big win on CBS? It's America's most watched network. It's the network of stars. Now get into that, but real quick, as you were saying that, I got asked uh, when I did uh, studio work with Chris Williamson on Saturday night on HQ. Mm -hmm. He asked me, and I didn't know it was coming. He said, this was before the Purdue game. He said, right now, would you take Purdue or UConn if we started the tournament tomorrow? I'm going to ask you. I'll tell you my answer after you give me yours. But if we field it tomorrow and you had to take one or the other, who would you take? Purdue, that has more quad one wins or, and quad one and two than anyone in the country? Or would you take the Connecticut Huskies, which will hold on to their number one ranking for a fourth straight week when the polls refresh on Monday? I'm glad you asked that because I, you, you, you can imagine every day that I tweet a link to a ranking that has Purdue number one instead of UConn, somebody's got something to say about that. And it's always like, oh, so you think Purdue's better than UConn or you don't think UConn's as good as Purdue. It's always stuff like that. I've never actually said whether I think Purdue's better than UConn. I don't, I don't believe I've ever weighed in on that one way or another. Um, when I rank Purdue ahead of UConn, it is strictly because I believe that the body of work is superior. Um, I think they're comparable teams. I think they're they're very similar. I think they're both obvious national title contenders. I could see either one of them winning six games uh, in the NCAA tournament. I don't feel strongly about this. You ready for this? Let me put it this way. Right. I feel strongly that Purdue should be ranked number one in the country right now. I feel very strongly about that. I think Purdue has the best resume in the country. They have as many quadrant one wins as UConn. Nobody has more than them and UConn. They have more wins, four more wins inside the first two quadrants than UConn. They have um, six wins over top 25 net teams. Mm -hmm. UConn only has two. Mm -hmm. I feel strongly that Purdue should be ranked ahead of UConn right now. I do not feel strongly that Purdue um, is better than UConn. And I do not feel strongly that Purdue is an, a better championship contender than UConn. But to answer your question, because yeah. I, uh, I would take Purdue. I'll take Purdue. To Ooh, win. Okay. I would take Purdue, but I don't think it's crazy for somebody to make the case for UConn. Excellent. UConn yeah. is excellent. I can't stress that enough. Excellent, dude. They're they're ridiculous. And we'll get to them quickly later in the show. They're 20 and 2. They've had a fully healthy roster like for three games, and they're outrageous. I would take UConn, uh, but Purdue has the best overall resume at this point. They get into Wisconsin, they get a win. Nada's gonna post a poll here for everyone watching live. We appreciate you joining us on a Sunday afternoon just to see who would you take. Purdue or UConn to win the 24 title, one or the other, which would you lean right now? Because, yeah, the Boilermakers have the best resume. That's not arguable but at, at this point of the season there. And uh, good game on CBS. Love hearing uh, Bird and Raft on the call there. Uh, they had a great call, as always. And I tell you what, um, it was it was a, a satisfactory win for Purdue. It got a little bit, uh, I don't want to say hairy, because I never thought Purdue was going to lose, but it got a little bit weird at the end there. We've had, we've had actually a run here of just... <laughs> It got weird. It got a little controversial. A yeah. couple of different places. Yeah, it, it, I, I, ultimately, I thought the refs made the right calls or non calls in the final minute, but it did get a little. It got a little. It did. Not, it like yeah. it did. Did Purdue deserve to win the game? Yes, I think Purdue deserved to win the game. Uh, Wisconsin came up short. Uh, didn't hit a three in the second half. Went 0 of 10 from three point range on the game. Bucky went three of 19 from three point range. That's uh, that's rough there. Edie, 18 points, 13 boards, four turnovers. Uh, a just okay game from him, but that's he's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the fact that Purdue got the kind of performance here out of Lance Jones, 20 points, 8 of 14 from the field, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, a uh, couple of really like just a lot of a couple of plays out there in that game where it's like, okay, here's a dimension that Purdue has this season that it just it just it, it wasn't there a season ago. And Braden Smith played well as, as well. He had 19.6 rebounds, three assists, although he had, he had a brutal turnover there late in the second half. A uh, lawyer added 12 on top of all that. Um, you know, Purdue just continues to not just rack up really good wins, uh, but the way that it's getting these. And I thought Lance Jones, a senior, um, obviously, who's 
joined the program this season after being at Southern Illinois. Um, a good portal get and like a good a good role player who can star on a given night. I thought that was the most important takeaway there for uh, and, and as far as I'm concerned. I, I noticed the same thing. And where I noticed it most, uh, like final minute, where it is starting to get – like Wisconsin cuts it to five. They've got the ball down five. There's a little more than a minute to go. They turn it over. And then Lance Jones transitioned late. He just beat everybody down the court, right? Like that that's among the knocks on Purdue. Like, did, did, um, are they athletic enough on the perimeter to deal with the type of team they will theoretically have to run into at some point on their road to the final four? And um, I don't know. Like, like, I, you're right. Zach Eady's going to get all the tension. The sophomore guards probably right there after him. But Lance Jones is a, uh, you know, a, 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 I believe a f- fifth year player now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Fifth year player, um, you know, got him in the portal and he's instrumental to what they're doing. Like if Purdue is able to break through and get to the final four for the first time since 1980 and win a national title, Zach mm-hmm. Eady will be the main reason, but Lance Jones will be on the list of reasons. You're getting good support there. And and ironically enough here, um, they got Trey Coffin Wren came off the bench to score four points. Not a lot of support. I don't think Purdue and Kansas are similar in terms of bench support. I truly think that Kansas like has a six man max roster at this point. No, nobody's similar to Kansas in bench support. That's 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 true. Uh, they, but Purdue didn't get it on the road here, and and it's you can see the minnow the minutes kind of winnowing there for um for Painter and Purdue, but they they got it done and uh, they do it on the road. They dodge taking a third loss in the league. They maintain a stranglehold um, in terms of projection for uh, for Big Ten standings and, and moving forward here. By by nature of the result, they are now tied in the loss column with Wisconsin. Uh, no, Wisconsin took its third loss, right? If I'm thinking off the top of my head here, because Wisconsin had two, so now Purdue has the standalone lead in the. Big yeah, there, but right? Purdue Purdue is now the only two lost team in the Big Ten standings. Yes, that's right. That's right. Because I was, you know what, I. Had, Briefly blanked on the fact that uh, Wisconsin it took the it took the L at, uh, at Nebraska here. So, uh, you know, four days ago, eight and one in the league. Now eight and three, and uh, I just brought up the schedule. So they're going to go at Michigan, at Rutgers, home 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 to Ohio State, Wisconsin. You'll have a you'll have a chance to uh, to regather yourself here. And a quick note on uh, on the Badgers: uh, Tyler Wall, twenty points. Uh, Klesmit played decently well. Um, AJ Store came off the bench and had fourteen there. The three point shooting was the overwhelming thing. Um, it was a good push, but I kind of felt watching the game having with with the Badgers having it in, the, in their building and doing well like down low. Like they had more pain points than Purdue. GP, um, I just felt like there was separation between these two teams. And you know, you give Wisconsin however many many points they they get as an advantage in a matchup like this because they're playing in their building, and even still. Um, it was a competitive one, but at the at the end of the day here, uh, I hate to use a cliche, but like you just kind of look back and you're like, you know what, Purdue just it's it's the reinforcement that Purdue is on a separate tier from everyone else in the Big Ten. Wisconsin may well prove to be number two in the league. It sits there in the standings now with Illinois obviously creeping in uh, as well, but uh, just don't have enough. Like Wisconsin needs to play an A game, and Purdue probably has to be a B minus for Wisconsin to beat them. That's not what happened here. It was not an A game from Wisconsin, and not being able to. Uh, to hit the ocean from the side of the boat in the second half from beyond the arc was ultimately what I think did him in. To your point, and perhaps this is the best way to illustrate just how good Purdue and UConn are. Because I hate when people, and I guess this is just the nature of rankings, particularly when you have different people ranking these two teams differently. Um, then they end up getting pitted against each other. And UConn fans will try to tell you how Purdue's not any good and discount what they've done. And then Purdue fans will try to tell you how UConn is whatever, and they'll discount what they've done. The truth is these are the two best basketball teams in the country, I believe. They certainly have the two best resumes in the country. And what's interesting is they both have other top 10 teams in their league, at least relative to my top 25 and one. We'll see what the AP poll looks like on Monday. But I've got Marquette in the top 10 with UConn out of the Big East. And I've got Wisconsin in the top 10 um, uh, with Purdue out of the Big Ten. Here's my point. These two schools, UConn and Purdue, both are in leagues with other top 10 teams. And I don't think they have a serious threat within their own league. Like they'll lose games. They've already lost games. But even though there are, there's another top 10 team in both of those schools' leagues, 
I don't think they're seriously threatened for the league championship. I, I, I feel more confident telling you right now that Purdue and UConn will both win their leagues by multiple games, even though there are other top 10 teams in those leagues, than I would telling you that either one of them doesn't win their league this season.